Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do something that I've done numerous times on this channel, um, which is a warm up. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to kind of narrate through the process of my brain whenever I start doing the warm up. Uh, I encourage you, uh, if you do draw uh, every single day or every other day, that you pick a subject, right? You can pick a subject like an animal, a specific animal every month and you work through the uh, the process of creating that animal over and over again and you can draw it many different ways using different types of materials I tend to gravitate towards faces um, just because I like you know I like characters and faces and it helps me understand the process of creating these faces the more and more that I do it and you can modify you know your process here and there to um, really facilitate whatever character that you want to draw. You know, if you have a large character, a small character, if you have an elongated face or, or a scrunched face, and it's not so much caricaturing, if you guys know what that terminology is, caricature to exaggerate um, the features, but it's just a feeling, especially whenever I get down and start doing characters, uh, you know, professionally. Uh, you'll have a, you know, an outline or create a brief of who the character is, and it will really um, dictate to you how the character looks. But in this context, it's just a warm up, right? Um, I've got some reviews coming for you guys uh, of some products that uh, were just released. Uh, one of them is from XP Pen, so I'm very excited about that one. And another company uh, is going to send me a uh, standalone side drawing tablet. I say standalone, it's got to be connected to a host, but we'll get into that as well. I did have a company contact me recently that wanted to do uh, me to do a review for them, and they actually wanted me to pay for the product ahead of time, and then they would refund me the money uh, back when. I did the video. Um, you know, I, I think that's an interesting uh, way of doing things, and that's completely fine if that's your business model, but um, I, I think I'm going to skip that one just because, you know, if they don't like the video and they could just, you know, they could not they could not pay me so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move forward with that so uh, either way stay tuned definitely uh, not only for this warm-up today but also we got reviews uh, coming uh, of multiple products and uh, and you know me I always like to do the the review with the drawing so hopefully you guys will stick around and subscribe but uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, on the warm-up okay so this morning we're just gonna do like I said a really quick warm-up it's nothing you know major using Prismacolor blue line pencil on some Bristol board. I like working on Bristol board because it's nice and smooth, sort of a neutral playing ground. I can put some marker on here if I need to, and it holds pen and ink really well. Okay, so shapes. I always tell students whenever they first start having frustrations in drawing that the best thing to do is to start out drawing very broad, right? Very broad. <clears throat> you know, big strokes with uh, simple shapes. So I'm doing a three-quarter view of a character. Uh, not really thinking about anything particular, other than to just show you guys the process that I utilize whenever I do this. So, you know, three-quarter view. So typically whenever I draw, I think of uh, a sphere. So obviously you saw me draw a sphere and then I drew a secondary uh, element on the top which would be the forehead element. Since this is a character or a caricature things are going to be exaggerated to uh, exemplify and um, focus on certain character traits. So this particular person would be maybe uh, He's got a strong jaw, so he's not really a focus character, but more or less a secondary character. So his nose is going to be a little bit more bulbous. Depending on what your creative brief says or whatever you're trying to design, will of course dictate. So if this was a really intelligent character, then I might have his brain a lot larger um, and the features uh, a little more neutral. Um, and maybe since he's driven, I might have some of the angles on him a little bit sharper. But since he's not, we're just having fun, right? That's all we're doing. So whenever I do three-quarter characters, I always like to do that outside corner first because then that will kind of show me where I need to put that other eye and, of course, that ear and the cheek. Now, 
It's also important that you draw through the um, the uh, elements uh, in the face to where you know it kind of shows you where stuff needs to be. So right now you see I drew that circle right there, which is going to be the the eye. Let's go ahead and do this. And throughout the drawing, whatever you're drawing, um, there will be frustrations, right? These are things to be expected, uh, especially if you're doing things, you know, for somebody and you're trying to stick to a specific uh, gamut or parameter and stay with inside of that, you know, if the person asks you and says, I want a villain, I want a, uh, a good guy, a bad guy, you kind of have to think how you're gonna how you're gonna manufacture that on paper and a lot of times they'll have uh, reference for you this is just kind of playing off the cuff right here having some fun let's go ahead and draw that I like to get the eyes in place pretty quickly and this is again a neutral position if I were to really have him shot then I would have the eyes wide open I would have this brow line really high but instead it is that neutral position. Maybe I'll have his, this, this brow going up a little bit more than the other one. Okay, again, drawing through, so maybe I'll have the cheekbone going through his nose. Even though that's not gonna be there in the end, I do wanna know where stuff goes. It helps me. So maybe have his chin come out a little bit more. Maybe a little butt chin and let's come around and then I have so as you see I've got this center line right here it goes all the way down right there kind of imaginary I really imagine that th that whenever I'm drawing uh, and then I've got this nose kind of coming out big bulbous nose I've got that nostril flare right there can't see the nostril flare because it's over here on the edge maybe you see it just a hint of it Actually, you won't. Okay, so then I'm gonna give him a mustache. So hair is one of those things that really confuses people, um, especially whenever they're beginning drawing. Hair is one of those things where we think of hair as individual strands. I'm not really sure why, <laughs> because you know, in the context of how it looks on a person, it is a form in and of itself. It is a fluid form, means it moves, right? And it's very organic. But whenever you have something still and it's static like this, definitely think of hair as a as a, uh, a solid. So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll just draw really big, like I'll have you know something like this that comes around, and it'll be a solid. And what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll you know near the edges, maybe I'll fray it out a little bit. Right, to help indicate that it is indeed a free-flowing form. See, and whenever you do it like that, and it's a shape, then it has a little. You have a little bit of understanding, better understanding that it is indeed a 3D form, and you can go back and really put in some of those more organic strands that move around. Right. Okay, let's go and bring that up a little bit. This kind of comes here. And we're gonna have that brow. Um, so placement, placement of the secondary eye. So this is the primary right here for me because I, I did this side first. So let's go ahead and color in, shade in these brows real quick. And give them a little bit of form, shade that in. Face construction. Here's the cheek. Here's the other side of the corners of his mouth. And then I've got that mustache, I want it to be pretty big. Again, I'm not thinking hair, I'm thinking shape. Always think shape first. And then we can come back, since we already have this drawn, even if you want to go so far as to draw some little construction lines, just to give you an indication that it is a 3D form and, and, and you know is affected by light and shadow and, okay. 
So now I have his neck come down. So here's his head comes up. I mean, even if you want to do stuff like this, you can draw, have that head, that cranial mass comes here. Here's his cheek, or his, uh, his uh, jawline, his ear. So I'm going to go ahead and put this other eye in. What I'm going to do now is so I'm, I'm always looking back and referencing this eye and placement, like the cheek comes out here. I can even go as so far as to put that cheek in temporarily. See, and then that's going to adjust the jawline a little bit. And then that's going to adjust the neckline. Comes here. Okay, so then we're going to come back again, giving that ear a shape, not focusing too heavily on details just yet. And that ear come out because I want him to have some big ears. Big ears. We're going to have that come around. corner from his eye. Here's the inset of his eye right there. And basically and the eyeball is going to be sitting right there. And what you could do sometimes if you want, you can draw that circle in and then just give an indication, you know, Maybe this one's closed a little bit more. And then I've got this one open. All right. So be sure if you do stuff like this, say so I've already made a little bit of a mistake. I'm gonna go ahead and make that pupil smaller. Make that iris, okay. Because I want this to be more of a shock. There we go. That's better. And then again, I'm giving the proper sizing because I don't want one eye to have a different sort of, sh uh, I don't want to say shape, but you know, proportion. So let's go ahead. up, it comes around, and then I've got the bottom part of the eye, maybe his brow comes up, get shaded in, and now I'm going to kind of erase out, actually where's my, I do own one of these things, I don't know where it went. Oh, here it is. <laughs> My little eraser. I use this sometimes. See, it's mechanical. You can go in. It doesn't always work very well. Yeah, not very well. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and do this. Then we're going to go ahead and shade this top part in. Give him a little bit of eye baggage, that soft tissue that is in the under part of your eye. Good. And since this cheat, okay, so if you ever look at yourself in the mirror, which everybody does, or at least the majority of us do, and we fix ourselves for presentation purposes to go out into the day, you might smile. So whenever we smile, think of your face as more or less a squeezable, uh, like a balloon. So whenever you squeeze one part, another part comes out. So if I were to go ahead and have this come up like that, this cheekbone would squeeze out because this, this, this fat mass on your cheek is going to expand out. Let's go ahead and have that. But I'm not going to do that since he's got this mustache right here, I'm just going to have this bottom lip and I'm going to have this like this. 
then we're gonna have the mustache. Now that I've got this in place, and I'm thinking in terms of 3D form, it's just I'm going back and really just giving just little details to that mustache, like so. Okay, so I can come back with my eraser, use a little bit larger of an eraser right here. And you don't necessarily have to erase. I typically don't erase. I just want to give context to the drawing and let you see what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay, let's have this come in. Maybe he's got a little sideburn right here. He's got a little bit of... No, I don't like that. I was going to give him a little bit of a mullet, but I decided against it. So here's the side part of his jaw. Ear. Okay. A little bit larger. We're going to make that a little bit larger. So what I, a little rule of thumb, typically the corner of your eye, the eye or the ear is just slightly higher. So that's kind of, you know, in my brain, I've got that recorded just for, you know, now it doesn't have to necessarily be that. I mean, especially whenever you're doing like aliens and stuff like that. But people, I typically do stuff like that. I keep that in my brain. The top of the ear is, uh, is just higher than the corner. Maybe he's got a little go right there. And I've got this right here. See so what I'm doing is I haven't I haven't solidified a lot of the areas, so now I'm going back and I'm kind of solidifying those items. Let's go ahead and have this. So even like right here, I've got the top of his lip coming through. I'm going to go ahead and shade that bottom just slightly. I'm going to go ahead and shade in this mustache really quick. Remember, this is your drawing. This is your drawing. You can do whatever you want, however you want. If you want to make this cheek bigger, a little bit of shading right here on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna give him some stubble here on his chin. Make sure it comes out. Okay. There's that other ear. And I might even go as so far as to put that maybe in silhouette a little bit. And shade in some of these areas just. I'm just going to do this. Right? And his hair comes down. Like so, shade that in. So in this situation where I have really just a simplified little area right here, sometimes I'll draw in some of those lattice lines to really kind of, lattice or construction lines to really give that area a better understanding of form. Freckles here and there. Something fun, right? A little bit more five o'clock shadow. Okay, so in the three quarter, depending on your light source, we're not going to get too in depth with the light source, but I like to typically do light. Uh, so right now you've got the eye shine, it's sort of front up, so maybe he's got a shadow underneath his nose. 
right here. And I say eye shine because this is a round sphere and that eye shine is more or less up right about here in front of him. So we're gonna have a little bit of shadowing underneath his nose, maybe a little bit of shading on the mustache. And all these little details is just, even if it's simple, tend to help, right? A little bit, so we'll have a little bit of shadow back here, shadow underneath here, a little bit of shadowing under his chin, and then he's got that shadow underneath there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move this over. Okay, so here's the other face we're going to do. I'm going to move this over just slightly. I noticed in the last shot that I didn't get a lot of this, so my apologies for that. So let's do another one. So again, we're going to start out with that sphere, give that three-quarter line. Him to have a beard and we're gonna have that neckline come through now even this you can see exactly what is going on right you see that line comes here you see here's the center line of the face here's that corner right then I've got areas that I'm going to accentuate uh, exaggerate so here's his ear maybe he's a Pirate type, I don't know. Gonna have that beard come around, that beard shape. <coughs> but I want to go ahead and put the anchor points in. The anchor points being those items that I'm going to build from. And a lot of times the anchor points gonna be the center of the face, similar to what I did here. You're gonna put the eyes in and then you're gonna build out. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm going to have more of a kind of a squinty eyed expression and I'm going to give him a headband. So let's go ahead and draw that in. You see how I'm not drawing really heavy right now? These again are just the lines that give me an idea of where I want to place stuff. You know, I'm not going in real heavy handed. I can change things and um, it, jumps, it just helps me as uh, an artist kind of gauge where I need to put things. Okay, let's go ahead and have kind of a... One of the things that I think, um, especially whenever we're doing stuff like this, we as artists and illustrators, we want to overcomplicate things. I know I do. I overcomplicate things all the time. Um, clear expression is something that really I think is lost. So if he's going to have kind of a mean squinty face, I want these eyebrows to be kind of going inward, right? Go ahead and draw in. Uh, it's going to be down lower because his face is tilted and it's kind of facing forward a little bit. So this little right eye needs to be down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to have his eyes kind of squinty just a little bit. Alright. Just a little bit. Comes in. Okay. Shade that in. Anchor points, areas of your art and illustration that you build out from. OK. 
Okay. Now you notice a lot of times I'll do things like I'll draw a line from that inner part of the eye down because the way the face works, even if you're doing caricatures like this, you want some semblance of accuracy and I want that center part or that uh, inner part of the eye to at least come close to the outer part of the nostril because on real, on real human beings, that's the way it is, right? I can squash and stretch the face, but there is a point where it becomes unrecognizable and I don't want to do that. In. Again, I'm thinking about underlying structure, you know, that skull, since he's. We're going to have that eyebrow. Do the same thing over here. And you can see I've already done sort of that line. Again, thinking of shape. That's all I'm doing is thinking of shape. I'm just going to draw that. And even if it's really rudimentary and simple, simplified like that, draw some hair. And I can go ahead and put that in. Okay. I'm going to have that bottom lip kind of jut out a little bit. He's more or less, uh, um, again, he does, he's kind of like a pirate type, so he doesn't eat a lot and he's kind of emaciated, so that's why I've accentuated this item right here, outer part of his skull. And then he's got, you know, that lip that comes in, and of course he's sun-dried like a tomato. Let's have him come here again, frowned. That bottom lip coming out. move this ear out a little bit. It's a little bit too close to this, so I'm going to go ahead and oh, what did I do with my eraser? If you look at all my pencils, typically the erasers are all brand new. Because I don't I don't I don't want to say I don't like to erase. It's not pride. You know me, I never erase. I do. I just very sparingly because I draw so light. And if I do have to erase, I will use a rubber, like a large rubber eraser. Okay. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna think about beard. <clears throat> Actually, let me go ahead and draw this in right here. That comes up. Let's go ahead and have a few things here. Okay. He's got a few curls coming down here. All right. And then he's got his beard. So again, I'm thinking beard, beard. Beard has a lot of hair, but beard is also a simple shape. So I don't want to I don't want to crowd things too much cuz I like the silhouette of his head. And of course, he's got to have baggage. There's pirates sleep very well. All right. Okay. Good. I can even go so far as to shade this in slightly. Because the thinner the skin gets, the darker the, sh the rings around the eyes are going to be because you don't have that fat barrier. You don't have that fat barrier around your eyes. So you're gonna have red, you know, red eyes. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. And then we'll have this come around. I wanna make sure I know where exactly that beard needs to go. Here's the bottom of his chin. So let's go ahead and basically what I can do is I can kind of, first let's do his mustache. Okay. Good. Now we're going to draw in that beard, which comes around. <clears throat> that 
thinking in terms of shape. Kind of fans out like this. See, fans, again, that simple shape. I'm remembering where all my angles are. And his beard does extend uh, beyond his chin, but I don't want to go too far, right? I still want that jawline to be um, there. And you know it's there, and if I put the beard all the way down there, then I kind of lose that jawline, and I don't, I don't want to do that right now, so. Okay. The way that I do hair, I kind of, I, I use it as a sculpting tool around my character. There we go. It's not a widow's peak, it's just like a beard peak right here. Comes around, and then I can have it go around his chin. And give a little bit of shadow underneath. Good. And then I come, and I just, depending on if he's a captain, captains typically have really nice beards, and he's not a captain. So he's gonna have a little bit more of a ragged beard. So I need to go ahead and show that. Ragged. Okay. I say that because the captain would have access to a lot of the nicer things, and therefore he would take care of himself a little bit better, whereas maybe a deckhand will be more ragged because he's outside more. You know, maybe at night he's swabbing the poop deck. but he does have an earring. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. A couple little elements here and there. Again, shading helps. Let's go ahead and put that. Now what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm redefining and defining those areas that I kind of put off before in lieu of getting down the general roadmap of the character. So now I'm just, okay. These kind of fan out a little bit. Good. And he's skinny, so I need to, I need to remember that. So that jawline is right here. And there's his neck. Here's the back of his head, comes around. Here's the back of his neck. Right. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just shade in, put in some of the indications of mustache hair, variation of line weight in different areas to help push and pull that form forward and backwards. Shade in some of those areas. Maybe give him a little bit darker of a pupil. Because that helps me, you know. Okay, shade this in. Yeah. And since he's out, maybe he's got, he's out on the poop deck a lot. He's got sun damage, so give him some sunspots. And of course, since he is a pirate, he's got to have a scar. <laughs> okay. Just 
an indication of a pattern on that bandana. I don't want the contrast to be pulling from his eyes, which are basically the focus of the illustration, the eyes and that expression. A little bit more here. And again, I can go in and just, you know, I can fart around with this for however long I want to. But in terms of warm up, let's go ahead and do this. Yeah. Do this. That little motif on the back here, that little framing element helps bring him out a little bit more. Yeah, even that right there accentuates that push out right there. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so. That is known as a warm-up. About 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes of drawing. Half an hour, somewhere around there, just to get the juices flowing, get the day going, get the creativity going, get the hand connected to the brain. You know, these, these little drawings that you do every other day, it's maintenance. Especially if you're a professional or if you're a budding professional and you want to get better. These little drawings that you do our maintenance. That's all it is. And eventually you can go back in your sketchbook and you're looking through and say, oh, I remember whenever I did that drawing. This is what I was thinking. This is what I was going through. I remember who I based that character on. I'll do that a lot. I'll base a lot of the drawings that I, that I do on people that I see. And it really helps me anchor those things in reality. Right? A little bit thinner really pronounced Adam's apple. He's really, and then he's got these hairs coming out of the back of his head. So that's it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the warm up. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe please if you like what you see. I'm always trying to do a little bit better, a little bit different, show you guys something a little bit more about myself of what I do and you know, hopefully you guys are enjoying. We'll see you next time, okay? Bye.